Gear Seekers, I'm Mick. Intel challenged both Brian from Tech Yeah City and ourselves to build an Intel 12th gen powered gaming and content creation PC for 1500 Australian dollars. Now, that's about a thousand US dollars at the time of filming this video. And when they approached us with this, I thought to myself, 1500 Australian dollars isn't gonna get us very far. However, we made it work. Now, the only caveats really were that this didn't include a Windows license, but you also couldn't use used hardware and you had to buy it from an Australian based store. So that's what we did. Let's take a look at all of the parts and we're gonna put a PC together, we're gonna benchmark it and we've got a little surprise for you at the end of the video. So stick around. As with most builds that we do here on the channel, we pick things for a certain reason and because of the kind of limitation and the budget that we had here, we had to choose parts that we're going to work with the benchmarks that Intel had in mind for us to test this system with as well. So I'll walk you through basically all the parts because there is a method to the madness. So first off, if we take a look at the list here, you can see that we've got all of the basics here. If we go down and look at the price, now this is where I was actually quite surprised. $1,497 with a total saving of $326. Now the real message here is if you're trying to build a PC in a budget, try and look for things where you can save the most money and then maximize little bits and pieces for that extra price and performance. First off, let's take a look at the CPU. I went with the Intel Core i5-12400. Some of the benchmarks we're using will run better with an integrated GPU using QuickSync for things like encoding and that kind of stuff. So the 12400, even though it's a little bit more expensive than the 12400F, will net us better results if we are using this for those type of tasks. Next up, we've got the motherboard. Now, MATX boards are typically cheaper than ATX, and I found this one to be a pretty good price here. So like the original list price was $289 with a saving of $90. That is absolutely huge. And the reason why I went with this board in particular at the time of me choosing the parts was this one's got Wi-Fi and not everyone has ethernet in their home or they don't have ethernet somewhere that is accessible in their house and Wi-Fi, you know, is more convenient. You can save money here by going for a board without Wi-Fi, but you know, I was like, you know what? Wi-Fi is fine. I kind of toyed with what GPU I was gonna go with for a very long time, and I settled on an RTX 3060. Now, the main problem here is GPUs, you know, have been quite expensive over the last however long, but this one here had an original list price of 659 down to 599. So I made sure that I could get a 3060 in the budget for this system. Maybe I'll lose out on some benchmarks, but the extra VRAM in the future is gonna be more helpful. To save a bit of money, I went with a 16 gig kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX. It's not a fancy kit of RAM, but it is really reliable. And 3200 mega transfers, I think is fine for this system. I don't think we're gonna lose much performance with this RAM in particular. But it is a good price too, because that's also down by $6. I had a, a lot of thought about this and there were things that I could have done to save a bit of money. Like I could have gone the route of using a 2.5 inch drive and then some spinning rust. Why not spend a little bit of extra money, have a single one terabyte drive. Now it's not the fastest drive in the world, but it is a very good drive. And the price here, 149 down from 169, it just had to be done. Now there were some other drives I was considering, but for the quality of this drive compared to some of the other cheaper drives, this one got us closer to the $1,500 mark. Now, Warzone will fit on a one terabyte and not two, so we're good. I mean, for now anyway. <laughs> There's a, a really good reason for this case. <laughs> Basically, we've used this case before and if you're new to the channel, you may not know this, but this case is really, really good. It's got good airflow. It's very cheap and it's cheaper than usual. So when I bought this case to do the review of it ages ago, it was $105 down to $84, so $21 discount. Not only that, it includes three RGB fans. Now it's 2022. You need a little bit of RGB bling as Tech Yes City would put it. So we got ourselves some RGB. Now here's the only part of the system that I'm not particularly excited about. 
and that is the Silverstone Strider Essential 600 watt. Now this was basically the last bit of our budget and I know it's not always wise to you know, scrape on your budget when it comes to power supplies. However, I have used this power supply before, so it is relatively good. The only drawback here is it's got ketchup and mustard cables, but Intel didn't say that I couldn't use my own parts to make this PC look a bit better, so. <laughs> With all that said, I've got all the parts here. I bought all this stuff from Scorp Tech last week. So let's put it together in the classic Gear Seekers way. Let's do it. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build of this awesome little 12400 powered beast. But as promised, we did benchmark this system with eight different benchmarks. There's actually 10, but we included eight. And I'll put links to the other two that aren't being shown in this video. But basically the idea is Brian and I both ran the same benchmarks. I have no idea what his hardware is, what results he got. We're basically both doing this blind to each other. That sounds really rude. <laughs> Let's take a look at the results from all of the benchmarks that we ran. There's lots, lots to get through. We didn't actually choose these benchmarks. These are the benchmarks that Intel wanted us to run on these systems. So luckily we've got old faithful shadow of the Tomb Raider. We used high settings for all these tests and we actually used DLSS as well just to see what the differences would be with that enabled and both turned off. So pretty good results here. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077, again with DLSS because we had the ability to do that because of the RTX 3060. And even at 1440p at high, this is gonna be very, very playable on this system. Next up with Hitman 3, this is using the built-in benchmark and actually all of these are built-in benchmarks, well the ones we've done so far. And we use the Dartmoor scene which is one of the benchmarking scenes here and the results are fairly impressive even at 4K with DLSS enabled. 
Next up is Valorant. I actually created a bit of an automation here on the range, which is like the welcome map kind of thing in Valorant, just to see what the performance would be like. And Valorant is so well optimized for every PC. So there you have it, Valorant runs amazingly on this PC. Intel wanted us to test out CSGO. Now the way I always test CSGO is I play a full round of Dust 2. In the game, I use 1080p at the lowest settings for the resolution. What I did is I used the benchmark record function in Afterburner and I recorded the whole match and this is the average FPS from this match that got spat out at the end of the whole round. For content creation benchmarks, we ran a bunch of Puget Bench benchmarks on this system as well, just to get an idea of what the performance would be like for content creation. Now, these numbers don't mean a whole lot unless you're comparing it with another system, but this is a good reference to have. Then we ran the Photoshop benchmark as well, and I actually haven't really run this Photoshop benchmark that much, so it's hard to comment about the performance of this system. And lastly, with Premiere Pro, the performance, again, I'm not really sure how to compare this considering we have our own Premiere Pro benchmark that we've built that does something kind of similar. So I don't know what this is gonna be like, but hopefully it's better than Brian's performance. As you can see, the benchmark results from this little 12th gen 12400 powered gaming and content creation PC is pretty good. This is a a potent little combo. And I've got to admit that when this project came along, I kind of knew what I wanted to go with hardware wise. And I've actually kind of built the same system before, even in the same case previously. And I tested it and I knew that that was gonna be a banger of a combination to have all of those parts come together. But what I'm curious about is seeing what Brian from Tech yes CD came up with for his part selection and his benchmarks. So I'll put a link to his video in the description as well. So you can go and check that out. See who did the best. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I know as much as you know right at this point. Actually, you probably know more by the time that I'm talking. Anyways, guys, I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description if you wanna see what all the parts are in this potent, little beast of a PC. You may have noticed that with this PC, I kind of cheated a little bit. And what I mean by that is, I put custom sleeved cables in the PC just to give it a bit more of aesthetic. Now there's a reason for it and you'll find out what it is if you just stay tuned, right? Right, just stay tuned. You probably saw me do other little things too, like removing the rear fan before I put the motherboard in. I've built in this case before and I found that it's easy just to pull out that rear fan before putting the board in. As well as that, I pulled the front fans out and I put them on the outside of the case. I did this to create more room inside of the case. And this case has double air filters. So it's actually easier if I remove the front filter that goes on the other side of the panel and just use the included front filter here. And then what that does is it moves the fans further forward. The airflow is gonna be exactly the same, but it looks better when the fans are on this side without any framing. So it's functional, but it's also more for the look of the PC as well. And special thanks to Intel for getting us involved in this project because it's not something that we would typically do. It's not that we don't want to do it. We do want to do more of this kind of stuff, but no one's really asked us to do anything like this before. And I was like, absolutely, let's get involved. So again, thanks to Intel. I know this video is sponsored and whatnot, but I got to tell you, I've used a lot of 12th gen parts and Intel really came good on their promise of delivering really good performance with their new platform and 12th gen has shown us that they do listen. Let us know in the comments who you think had the best PC out of Brian and I. I'm a bit biased, I think mine's better. I don't even know what his is, but mine's better because it's mine. But it's not actually my PC at all because ladies and gents, this PC can be all yours because we're giving away this entire PC. Special thanks to Intel for giving us the opportunity to give away this PC and then just gonna ship it to whoever wins it. So click the link in the description if you want to win this PC, right? Pretty cool, win another PC. How many PCs is that this month, Claire? Two? Maybe. It's gonna be three. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button down below. And also, again, special thanks to Intel for giving us this opportunity. This is lots of fun for us. I hope Brian's PC came out as nice as ours. And I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. That's right, me. I'm Nick with Gear Seekers, the only host here on the channel. <laughs> you peak. We seek. But before we go, just remember, ladies and gents, this potent little PC can be all yours. Thanks for watching.